we talk about population balance modeling today. And the background to population balance modeling is that uh, we have in our process industry where we have to deal with particulates. Good example is a petroleum industry. Some of you may have seen the cat cracking is probably the most interesting example of solids moving between two environments. You have a catalytic uh, reactor, the catalyst gets deactivated, it is moved to a regenerator where it is regenerated by burning off the coke and the solids are returned to the cat cracker by pneumatic conveying. So, our interest is to understand what happens to the particle, how the catalyst activity is distributed over the particles. So, means we need to now look at some detail about what is happening inside the equipment. So, that is the, uh, the motivation for looking at population balance modeling. Of course, these applications are much wider. You can look at uh, in economic system, in, in, in uh, ecology and so on, but we will by and large concentrate on chemical engineering kind of applications. Okay. To do this, we will look at our material balance, something we are all very familiar, material balance on a CSTR. something that we have learnt for a very long time. So, I will state this once again. So, the material balance for a CSTR we have written for a very long time, I have written it once again, input, output, generation, accumulation. So, when you go from our basic statements that we have done for a long time to population balance modeling, we try and understand what is meant by S naught, what is meant by S, what is meant by R and I have said this before and I say it once again whatever measurements we do, the measurements are based on some sampling. Sampling means what? You take a large number of samples and you do an average. Sampling refers to an average. So, once again here we say that these samples S naught, S and R are basically averages. Okay. Moment we say it is an average, if I say what is the average age of this class, then I should know how the age of the class is distributed and therefore, I can find the average of the class. So, any average refers to existence of what is called as a distribution of the property of interest. If the property of interest is S, then we should talk about distribution of this property. I can say this distribution of this property is F naught, the distribution of this property here is F 1. Okay. What is the property of interest? The property of interest is S. In this case, it is concentration if it is a stirred tank where a chemical reaction is taking place, we say it is concentration. Now, if you go to a forest and if you want to say what is the age distribution of animals, then clearly it, uh, S refers to age. It could be any other property which is of interest. Okay. Therefore, we say S naught is essentially a first moment of the distribution. So, average is the first moment of the distribution, something that we have learned for a long time. So, S naught refers to first moment of the distribution of that property F naught at the inlet. Similarly, S I say is the first moment of the distribution F 1. I will put S here okay. and R is first moment R bar sorry, this is S bar F 1 of S d s. Okay. We, we agree with this. So, all these are averages with respect to the distribution that exist. We recognize that f 1 is the same as f 1 in the equipment that is the meaning of a stirred tank. Okay. So, if I call this as equation 1, now I can put this representation into equation 1. Therefore, equation 1 looks like this integral s f naught of s d s integral v naught s f 1 of s d s okay. 
then we have integral r f 1 of s d s times v equal to del by del t of v integral what is s bar is here s so it's not enough space here so okay is it all right we all agree with this okay now what i want to do now is this term let me say this once again this term inside the this term here i want to integrate by parts so i'll multiply this by 1 so first function and this is the second function okay so we integrate this by parts so i'll quickly write down what it is then we will so let me write the result and then we'll look at it once again integral s not f not s ds v not integral s f 1 s d s second term. Then I write the differentiation by integration parts r v f s okay, minus so integral s del by del s integral r f d s. Okay, equal to on the right hand side del by del t with in brackets v integral s f 1 d s. Have I got it right? Please tell me. Have I got all the items properly done? First function, first function into integral of the second, it is ok. V is missing. Thank you. So, we can write this as v naught, let me just write this just to sort of draw your attention to minus v naught s f 1 d s. I am deleting this term which I will explain to you shortly why I am doing this integral s del by del s of r f 1 d s equal to del by del t integral s f 1 d s. I tend to forget the v frequently. I hope the v is here also. I will put it here. So, what I am saying is that this let me write this I will come back to you in a minute. Is it okay? Now, what we are saying is that this equation, if I call this as equation 3, I call this as 2, 2 is actually the first moment of 3. Do we agree? So, what we are saying is that what we have been writing for a long time, our material balance, equation 3 rep it looks like a more fundamental statement of the material balance that we have been writing for a long time. Now, the advantage of looking at 3 as a way of representing material balance is that now it gives us an insight into what happens inside the process. So, it tells us how the distribution of property affects whatever is the process we are trying to understand. So, this is the most important point that it comes as a more fundamental statement of material balance. Having said this, having said this, anything that we write has to be proved through experiments, correct. We need to validate whatever we say. Material balance we have validated for a long time, conservation of mass is known for a long time, okay. conservation of energy is known for a long time, but that this represents a description of material balance we have not proved yet. So, as we go along perhaps in the next few lectures, we will try to see how this way of trying to understand reality, how it describes reality that we know. So, if it describes every reality that we know there is reason to believe that this is probably an equally acceptable representation of material balance. 
something that we have to see as you go along. Okay? Now, when we look at literature, the literature writes uh, population balance in a slightly different way. What they do is this, I mean uh, if you look at any other literature, they will look at a material balance, this is S, this is D S. They will write convective flows going in, convective flows out, what is input, output, generation, accumulation like what we have written. Let us do that once again. Let us see how our friends who write this equal to accumulation. So, our input, how do you represent input to a distribution? If flow is V naught, if F is the distribution of interest, then we say it is V naught times F naught of S d S. So, this is the convective flow into the element of interest. Is this all right? Okay. Now, similarly, what is the output? Output is V naught times F 1 of S d S. This is the convective flow outside the interval. Okay. This is an important point. How do we represent uh, convective flows into a distribution? If V naught is the flow, V naught F naught d S is input, V V1, V naught F naught F 1 d S is the output. Okay. Now, generations they would represent like this. If I say W is the sometimes I write W, sometimes I write V, so its meaning is the same. This is minus so they would write equal to accumulation okay is this all right what we are saying whenever we write material balance in the, in the way our friends in uh, uh, population balance, they would write like this. So, we take uh, in the limit as d s tends to 0, okay, this becomes v naught f naught minus v naught f 1, this becomes d by d s or del by del s, I write del by del s f 1 r 1 w del by del t, I should say w here. W F 1. Okay. The meaning of W and V, W is often used because we are talking about catalyst, sometimes V is used, sometimes W is used. So, both have the same kind of meaning. Okay. So, when we want to write our material balance using the same kind of approach that people do in population balance, you can do it this way or you can do it the way I have shown you earlier. Both ways are equivalent. Now, suppose for example, we have a forest in which animals are born okay, and animals can also die. In other words, in this forest environment there can be birth and there can be death. Okay. How do you take into account birth and death? Birth means what? Birth means it takes place at a that means it is got 0 age. Birth means it is 0 age correct. That means the property belongs to s equal to 0 if a property belongs to s equal to 0, we represent it by a delta function. You would have learned this in control theory. Okay. It is not new to you. Correct? Now, if there is death, okay, death will be some function of s times d s. I have to put a d s here. I forgot to put a d s here. Okay. Therefore, this equation will have plus delta of s minus 0 minus of d of s. So, this is how the population balance will look like if there is birth and death. This is okay with all of us. So, we, we talked about convective flow, convective flow out a reaction that uh, brings about a change in the property plus there can be birth I mean, if it is a catalytic reactor if there is birth of catalyst activity it could be it may not be or death that means activity get degenerated for some reason I am sorry absolutely correct. Is it okay? So, the statement of, uh, of population balance is input, output, reactive generation, this birth, this death. Okay? Now, with this uh, background, we want to solve a problem. So, let us take one problem of commercial interest. The problem of commercial interest is what happens in the cat cracking. So, reactor, regenerator, system 
of the cat cracking industry, but it can be in any other industry. So, I am just looking at cat cracking as an example, but there could be many others. So, what is the problem we want to solve? We want to understand this is reactor 1, this is reactor 2 okay, and material is flowing between the two. So, in the reactor we expect that our catalyst is undergoing some kind of deactivation. Okay. In the re reactor we expect our catalyst undergoes some kind of deactivation normally due to coking in cat cracking it is all due to coking. So, in the regenerator in the regenerator what we do is that we restore the activity we restore the activity. How is it done in the process they actually have uh, hot gas going up and then they burn off the coke. Okay. It is burnt and then it continuously it is restored and then brought back into the. So, this is what is coming in and is going out. Okay. I can put this as V naught showing that this whole process is operating at steady state. So, we are now not looking at the dynamics we can look at dynamics as well for the moment we are looking at steady state. Okay. Now, we want to write the material balance at steady state. What do we say our material balance? Let us write the material balance just for the sake of completeness. It is I will call this as F 2, I will call this as F 1. Okay. So, the distribution of catalytic activity that is coming out of the regenerator is F 2, going out of the reactor is F 1. Is it okay? at steady state. Are you okay? Yes or no? So, let me simplify this by taking the limits it becomes V naught F 2 minus V naught F 1 minus D by D S I will write D by D S times W I will put W 1 because W 1 F 1 R 1 equal to 0. Okay. I will divide throughout by V naught it becomes F 2 minus of F 1 minus D by D S of F 1 R 1 T 1 bar equal to 0. Okay. Is it all right? Now, this is for reactor. We can do the same thing for the regenerator. So, this is the reactor. Okay. This is the regenerator. So, we do not write this again, but I will simply write it is d by d s of f 2 r 2 t 2 bar equal to 0. This is regenerator. Is it okay? Okay, good. Now, I ask you now that if we can solve this differential equation, it should be able to tell us how the two reactors interact with each other. Therefore, it should be able to tell us how we should run this process to get what we want. So, all answers that are required from the point of view of running this uh, cat cracking should come out of solving this differential equation. Correct? So, let us see how to solve this and see what kind of results it gives us. Okay. Let me see what I have done. Okay. To solve I have called this 1 and 2, what I do is that add 1 and 2. Let us add 1 and 2. Okay. So, what do we get? d by d s of f 1 r 1 t 1 bar plus f 2 r 2 t 2 bar equal to 0. Yes or no? Okay. Now, I want to integrate this. Let me integrate this f 1 r 1 T 1 bar plus F 2 R 2 T 2 bar equal to some constant of integration. Correct? Yes or no? So, how do I generate some conditions on F 1 and F 2 so that I can determine this constant of integration? Okay. What do we do? Let us look at equation 1. What is it that we know? 
suppose the integrate equation 1 between what are the limits of s, s is let us say its catalyst activity it will be go from 0 to 1 correct. So, if I integrate equation 1 between 0 and 1 what is integral f 2 d f 2 d s by definition all distributions will integrate to 1 correct integral is 1. So, let us integrate equation 1 and see what it tells us integrate. So, I will call this as equation 3 for the moment integrate equation 1 we get 1 minus 1 minus f 1 r 1 t 1 bar correct and then what is it between 0 and 1 equal to 0 is it all right yes or no integrating equation 1. So, integral f 2 d f 2 d s is 1 integral f 1 d s is 1 and minus f 1 r 1 t 1 bar between 0 and 1 is it ok. So, it gives us f 1 r 1 t 1 bar at 0 at 1 minus f 1 r 1 t 1 bar at 1 at 0 equal to 0 ok. What do we know about f 1 r 1 t 1 bar and f 1 r 1 at 0 and 1 at r 1 at 0 at 0 ok. Now, what is this function f 1 is it a bounded function at 0. Now, we would not write a differential equation on an unbounded function. So, we will assume for the moment that f 1 is a bounded function and therefore, f 1 r 1 t 1 bar is 0 because r 1 is 0 is this clear. What are we saying r 1 is 0 at s equal to 0 yes or no. Since f 1 we are writing a differential equation on f 1 if it is unbounded we would not have written. So, for the moment let us assume that f 1 is a bounded function we do not know we should come back and find out whether it is correct or wrong. Assuming that f 1 is a bounded function therefore, f 1 r 1 t 1 bar is 0 therefore, this gives us the result is f 1 r 1 t 1 bar at 0 is 0 f 1 r 1 t 1 bar at 1 is 0 is it all right do we agree. Now, we can do the same thing with equation 2 repeat let us repeat what we have done with equation 2. So, integrate equation 2 is it all right. So, we go through the same process. So, so it becomes 1 minus 1 minus f 2 r 2 t 2 bar 0 to 1 equal to 0 therefore, f 2 r 2 t 2 bar at 1 minus f 2 r 2 t 2 bar at 0 is 0. Now, r 2 if you look at the function r 2 we find that as s equal to 1 r 2 goes to 0 ok at s equal to 1 r 2 goes to 0. Therefore, we will have f 2 r 2 t 2 bar at 1 is 0 therefore, f 2 r 2 t 2 bar at 0 is also 0 ok do we agree with this. So, this is I will also call this as 4 4 b and 4 a. So, so we have now to find the constant of integration in equation 3 what is the constant of equation uh, integration equation 3 what is the value of the constant it is 0 ok yes or no the constant of integration in view of what we have done so far is 0. So, so, let me substitute this. So, we get from equation 3 from equation 3 f 1 r 1 t 1 bar sorry plus f 2 r 2 t 2 bar equal to 0. Therefore, f 2 equal to f 1 r 1 t 1 bar divided by r 2 t 2 bar with a minus sign. Okay. Is it all right? Now, things are much easier our equation 1 which describes reactor this is our equation 1. So, if you just recall here our equation 1 is this now we got f 2 in terms of f 1 ok we already got f 2 therefore, we can substitute for f 2 in equation 1 and then solve this problem. Let us substitute f 2. So, substituting f 2 from from where? So, let me put some equation numbers here. So, that 5 ok ok I am substituting in equation 1 therefore, minus f 1 r 1 t 1 bar 
by r 2 t 2 bar. I am just substituting in equation minus of f 1 minus d by d s of f 1 r 1 t 1 bar equal to 0. So, this is how equation 1 becomes. So, equation 1 becomes this. Okay. So, let me simplify it a little further. Let me see what I have done. When I simplify it a little further, it looks like this d by d s of f 1 r 1 t 1 bar equal to minus f 1 r 1 t 1 bar within brackets 1 by r 1 t 1 bar plus 1 by r 2 t 2 bar. So, this is how our equation looks like. Okay. If I ask you what is the solution to this equation, what will be the solution to this equation? We can integrate this directly f 1 r 1 t 1 bar f 1 r 1 t 1 bar. So, it should be possible to integrate the answer that means, we have solution to the problem correct. Now, there is a constant of integration here which also will have to be determined. Okay. So, to, to do this we will take an example. Now, we take an example because it is take one example just to illustrate how the answers look like. Let us say I have taken 1 by k 1 t 1 bar as 2 and 1 divided by k 2 t 2 bar equal to 3. This is what is, I have just solved this problem for the case of 1 by in the nomenclature in literature this is called as alpha this is called as beta. Okay. So, to solve this problem to illustrate I have taken alpha as 2 and beta as 3. So, that you know we get nice numbers. Okay. Let us now integrate this. So, I want to integrate this. Okay. So, what is the integral of maybe I can write it here itself. So, integral is f 1 r 1 t 1 bar divided by I have taken constant of integration as q ln equal to integral with a minus sign 1 by k 1 s t 1 bar with a minus sign plus 1 by k 2 please make sure I do not make any mistakes. Okay. Integral I have done and d s I have got it right please tell me minus I have taken the minus sign here. Okay. This minus sign is here uh, r 1 I put as minus k 1 s okay, t 1 bar r 2 I put it as k 2 1 minus of s looks all right. Does it look all right? Huh? Can, can you help me integrate this? So, I will write the integral here at now I will write the integral in the next page. I am writing the integral l n f 1 r 1 t 1 bar by q equal to l n alpha s okay, plus beta l n 1 minus of s. Is this correct? Integral. I am just writing this I am just writing this integral, I will write it here itself. So, I am just integrating here itself l n f 1 r 1 t 1 bar divided by q equal to alpha l n s plus beta l n 1 minus of s. Is it correct? Is it ok? Is it ok with everybody? So, this becomes f 1 r 1 t 1 bar divided by q is uh, l n of this is ln here ln here s to the power of alpha 1 minus of s to the power of beta. Therefore, f 1 r 1 t 1 bar divided by q is s to the power of alpha 1 minus of s to the power of beta. So, this is our solution. Okay. So, let us just go back and then look at our original uh, problem. So, we started with this that there are the reactor there is a regenerator and the reaction is uh, the deactivation is given by a first order function and the regeneration is also given by a first order function. Okay. They transfer between them uh, at a certain known uh, mass flow. So, that steady state is maintained and that gives us this kind of relationship that the, the function f 1 is related to alpha and beta in this form. And what is alpha and beta? 
alpha is 1 by k 1 t 1 bar beta is 1 by k 2 t 2 bar. So, k 1 and k 2 are rate functions determined by some chemi chemical kinetics t 1 bar and t 2 bar are operating variables how we operate the process. So, this k 1 k 1 t r alpha and beta essentially tells you how the process will be run by you. So, if you know alpha and beta you know how to run the process. So, you can make appropriate choices of alpha and beta and appropriately run the plant to the extent you want to achieve. So, essentially it gives you a handle on how to run the plant. Okay. So, that is the important thing which means you are able to tell how alpha and beta determine the distributions of F 1 and F 2. Okay. So, if you want to uh, operate the plant in, a, in your own way it will tell you what is the F 1 and F 2. Let us just quickly put alpha equal to 2 and beta equal to 3 and see what kind of numbers did you get. Okay. So, F 1 R 1 T 1 bar divided by Q equal to S to the power of alpha 1 minus S to the power of beta alpha equal to 2 and beta equal to 3. Okay. Now, I want to find out what is Q, we still do not know what is Q correct. How do you find Q? How I have found Q I will just see. So, what I do is I let me put F 1 this will be what F 1 uh, equal to Q alpha s to the power of 1 minus s to the power of is it correct with a minus sign is it all right. I have just substituted for R 1 T 1 bar this is R 1 is what K 1 s. So, this becomes 1 by alpha I have just put all that together. Okay. What is F 2? What is F 2? Minus of Q beta times s to the power of alpha 1 minus of s to the power of beta minus 1. Is it okay? What is F 1 and F 2? Alpha minus 1 here. You are right my friend. Okay. Now, suppose I want to find out Q, what will I do? You simply say integral F 1 d s is 1. So, moment that will define. So, if you do integral f 1 d s is 1. So, integral f 1 d s equal to 1 0 to 1. So, that is equal to what minus of q alpha uh, integral s to the power of uh, alpha is 2 the s to the power and then beta is 3 0 to 1. Okay. So, this will should give us the value of q yes or no. So, let us integrate now and find the value of q. So, 1 equal to minus of q and then alpha is 2 uh, let me integrate okay. s times 1 minus of 3 s plus 3 s squared minus of s cube d s correct. But this I have to integrate 0 to 1 all right. So, have you done it properly I hope. Okay. Let us go through this integration quickly. So, I will get 1 equal to minus of q times 2 within brackets. So, it is s squared by 2 minus of 3 s cube by 3 plus 3 s to the power of 4 by 4 minus of s to the power of 5 by 5. Is it all right? I am just integrating it. I have, okay. So, I will get minus of twice q 0 to 1, so this is 1 by 2, and this is what 1 plus 3 by 4 minus of 1 by 5 0 to 1. So, it is minus of 2 q. So, I take 20 common denominator is 10 minus of 20 plus 15 minus 4 is it? Is it correct? So, what is q equal to? Minus 10. Okay. So, now we will be able to write our answers fully where is uh, what is q 1 f 1 and f 2. I would have written somewhere here it is here it is. So, value of f 1 is what? f 1 equal to q is minus 10, 10 alpha is 2 s to the power of 2 minus 1 and 1 minus of s to the power of 3 f 2 is 10 3 s to the power of 2 1 minus of s to the power of 2. So, that becomes f 1 is 
20 s times 1 minus of s cubed okay, and f 2 is 30 s squared into 1 minus of s whole square. Okay. Is this clear? So, to just looking back at what we have done is that there is a first order problem in which reaction deactivates the catalyst by a first order process and the regeneration also is a first order process k 1 and k 2 are constants uh, which describe the process kinetics and then when you go through the population balance it tells you what is the function f 1 and what is the function f 2. Now, if I ask you what is the mean value of f 1 what is the mean value of f 2 how will you find out. So, mean value of s 1 is integral s f 1 d s and mean value of s s 2 is integral s f 2 d s you have this is s this is s this is s see the mean value of a property is the first moment of the distribution our property is what catalytic activity and the distribution of that activity is given by f1 in the reactor f2 in the regenerator therefore the mean value of catalytic activity in the reactor is s times f1 ds mean value in the regenerator is s times f2 ds is it all right? So, let us quickly do this and get a feel for what this number is s 1 20 times s squared 1 minus of s cubed integral d s this is 30 integral s cube 1 minus of s whole square d s. Okay. So, you can do this integration yourself it is not a very big thing I have done this and then uh, what I get is that mean value here is 0.33 mean value here is 0.5. Okay. We, you can do this there is no point in uh, spending time on this. Now, what we are saying is that reactor operates at 0.3 regenerator operates at 0.5 and what is the driving force 0.5 to 0.3. Okay. Now, you can operate at 0.1 and 0.9 see the choice what is the choice in which you will operate will be determined by what you think is appropriate for your economics whatever the economics may be. This is an example which says that it operates between 0.5 and 0.33. Okay. Various choices depend upon the choice of alpha and beta catalytic activity. In this case in the cat cracker the property of interest is activity of the catalyst. How much coke is present on the catalyst more the coke less is the activity. Okay. So, to what extent you will regenerate so that you have a highly active catalyst in the reactor because the cost of regeneration and the you know the benefit of having a higher activity is what you have to balance in your process. Okay. Now, I deleted this term r times v times f 1 s correct. I said that uh, you know it, it is I mean our friends in population balance do not write it, but if you look now you can now you know what is f 1. Okay. Now, you do just look at this value r times f 1 times s between 0 and 1 does it go to 0? What is the value of f 1 at s equal to 0 for the function that we have? Okay. What about the other, other end f 2 as equal to 1 also 0. So, you find that this they actually disappears at both ends. Do okay. you, you recognize this? We deleted this term I said we will come back and tell you why we are deleting this term our friends in population balance understood this that is why they deleted it, but it is not so obvious it is not so obvious therefore, I have done this to show you that this term actually disappears. So, every example that we do we should ask this question and if it does not disappear which means we have not understood the process fully I mean you have to understand a little bit more then you will realize that it actually disappears. So, there will be instances where it is not obvious. Okay. Let us take one more example, an example for which all of you know the answer R T D of a CSTR. Okay. So, we want to apply population balance to understand what is the R T D of a CSTR. We know the answers, but still we want to apply this. So, what is our system? Our system is this. Okay. So, what is going in 
fluid elements, some fluid elements, uh, fluids coming in and fluids going out. We want to find out what is our property S. What is this property S? What is the meaning that we attach to this property S? Time of residence in the equipment. Okay. Uh, what is our population balance? Let me write population balance. We will not derive it this time because we have done this before. Why are you putting equal to 0 on the right hand side? Because our process is running at steady state. We want to find out the residence time distribution of our fluid elements when the process is running at steady state. Now, what meaning do we attach to this F naught? What is F naught? F naught is the time of residence of fluid elements at the inlet in the equipment. In other words, how much time fluid elements at the inlet has spent in your equipment? What is the answer? 0. Or in other words, the age of every one of you is the same, which means the age of every element which is entering is the same. What is that age? 0. Therefore, F naught is a delta function at 0. Okay. What is F naught? F naught by definition by this is a delta function at 0. Is this clear to all of you? Because no element has entered the equipment, correct. Therefore, every element has a time of residence in the equipment which is 0. Is this okay? Fine. Now, this equation I will call this equation 1. Okay. I want to solve this equation, correct. For solving this equation, there are two things that we should know. One, how do we solve a problem in which there is an unbounded function? There is an unbounded function, F naught is an unbounded function, correct. And our uh, understanding of equation theory of differential equations will tell us that whenever there is an unbounded function, you must get rid of that term. That is the way to solve the problem. You must get rid of that term, then only you can solve the problem, correct. That is one. Second is that what is this R1? What is this term R? What is R? Yes, yes, which means what? We have a property S, we have a property S and we want to know the time rate of change of this property or d by dt of this term, d by dt of S itself refers to t in this case time of residence. So, we are actually looking at where S is, S itself is t. So, we are looking at d by d t of t itself or it is equal to 1. Is this clear? What we are saying is the property of interest is S. What is that property? Time rate of change in the equipment. Time rate of change in the equipment. That means, S refers to the property t. Therefore, d by d t of t is 1. So, from the point of view of trying to determine the time of residence in the equipment, the function r in the population balance is r is 1. Is this clear? Okay. r is 1. Therefore, in this equation 1, we said that we should knock out this term. So, what our friends in mathematics tell us is that get rid of this term, solve the homogeneous problem first. Okay. Solve the homogeneous problem first. What is the solution to this homogeneous problem? R is 1. We have F 1 minus of d by d s of F 1 t 1 bar equal to 0. Correct. So, what is the solution to the homogeneous problem? What is the solution? Shall I write the solution? So, F 1 is d I will write like this d F 1 d s equal to minus of F 1 divided by t 1 bar. Therefore, solution is f ln of f 1 ln ln f 1 by q equal to e to the power of minus s by t 1 bar. Okay. So, this is the solution f 1 equal to q times e raised to the power of minus of s by t bar. Okay. This is the solution to the homogeneous problem. Okay. Now, what our friends tell us is that since you have knocked out this term f naught what you should do is to generate a boundary condition at t equal to 0 at s equal to 0 in this case. So, we must generate a boundary condition at s equal to 0, so that we can determine the value of q. On other words, we must learn to write our uh, 
material balance at s tending to 0. So, s tending we must write our material balance as limit as h tends to 0. Is this clear? What we want to determine to determine the uh, where are we anyway to determine the uh, the constant of integration we should uh, here it is I wrote it here. So, to determine the constant of integration you will find you will have to generate a boundary condition s tending to 0. So, let us try to do this help me you have s minus of d s and s. Okay. We want to write our material balance between s minus of s d s and s inputs and outputs yes or no. So, input minus of output plus generation equal to 0 accumulation. So, right, let us write all the uh, convective flows and then generations. What is the convective flow? F naught. So, we have V naught F naught of S D S input and then V naught I just let me write this down and then we come back to it in a minute input output plus generation V times F 1 S minus D S R 1 S minus of D S. Okay, input this is at s minus d s, then we have v times f 1 of s r 1 of s okay, equal to 0. Is it all right? Convective flow, convective flow, okay, convective flow, and then this is because of we are assuming that we are postulating r 1 is 1, it is a reaction term. Okay. In this case, the rate function takes the value of 1. Okay. Is it clear? Now, we want to take the limit as s tends to 0, d s tends to 0. Is it all right? Okay. This is the basic approach clear to you. Whenever you have an unbounded function, you must get rid of that unbounded function. That is the first process. Then try and look for a way of generating the, the boundary condition by writing the appropriate balances. In this case, uh, material balance. Now, limit as s tends to 0, d s tends to 0, uh, f s d, d s sorry, I have written d s already, sorry, f s d s. Now, what happens to this term? d s tends to 0, this goes off, s or no? Yes. s or no? Yes. Now, what happens to this term? Is there any material that belongs to s less than 0? Yes. There is no material which belongs to s less than 0. So, s minus d s must disappear. Okay. Now, this term what is this term? This is v naught delta of s d s where delta function f naught is a delta function correct f naught is a delta function. So, we know that the delta function the, this is actually equal to 1 by definition by definition delta function it is it is infinity and then it is 0 everywhere therefore, the integral is 1. Okay. Is that clear what we are saying? This first term is 1 why is it 1 because delta function is 0 everywhere it is infinity at s equal to 0 and the area is 1 that is that is the definition. Therefore, first term becomes 1 then this term disappears minus of f 1 0 r 1 is this one. So, f v naught v naught so that we get f 1 at 0 equal to 1 by t bar. Is it okay? What we have done? We have simply generated a boundary condition at s equal to 0. Is this clear? Okay. Because in population balance you will find this approach you will use again and again. This is, this is the most important point in population balance, how to generate an appropriate boundary condition to solve your problem. Okay. This is something that you have to do again and again, therefore, it is good to understand what has been written and why some terms have been knocked out. Okay. Let me go through this again. Input, what is this V naught F naught of S D S, what does it mean? This means, what is the convective input to this interval from this term. That means, what is the convective input that is entering this this uh, interval? The convective input is always v naught and f naught of s d s. Okay. Similarly, convective output. 
the generation term comes from generation at s minus of s which contributes to s generation of s the at s which goes out. So, it is the difference which contributes to the interval. Okay. In population balance the generation terms are always written like this for which we have already given a proof we have done that already. So, what is generated at s minus of s minus what is gen this is the difference will contribute to the interval. Okay. Now, when you look at each term we find that some terms do not contribute at all. For example, here as limit s tends to 0 s minus d s it cannot contribute to because s minus s does not exist because s less than 0 has no meaning. Therefore, we have deleted this term is that clear. So, and the first term is v naught uh, this is not there and it comes to f 1 of 0 equal to 1 by t bar r 1 r 1 is 1 we, we proved that d by d t for the case of residence time we said r 1 is 1 correct. So, this this the r 1 becomes 1 because this is equal to 1 is that clear term which one term. this one because this one v naught of f 1 as d s d s is 0 na. See f see this term what is the second term v naught f 1 s d s d s goes to 0. No, the, but this is a delta function. No? Is this clear? It is a good point he is making. See the first term v naught f naught of s d s why is it 1? It is because f naught of s d s is f naught is a delta function. Therefore, that integral is 1 while the second term f 1 is a continuous function f 1 is a continuous function therefore, f 1 d s is 0 because d s tends to 0 is that clear. So, this is the most important part of population balance is to be able to write this material balance and knock out terms that are appropriately not uh, relevant to your process. Okay. Okay. Now, let us look at our homogeneous solution. Our homogeneous solution says f 1 equal to q times e to the power of minus of s by t bar okay, where f 1 0 we say it is 1 by t bar. Okay. So, f 1 0 is 1 by t bar. So, what is q? So, q equal to 1 by t bar and therefore, f 1 equal to 1 by t bar e to the power of minus of s by t bar. Okay. And what is s? s is residence time, s by definition is residence time. s is the property of our interest and that property is residence time. So, let us just go through the whole thing once again what we have said. What we have said is that we have a, we want to find out what is the RTD of a stirred tank. Okay. We said fluid elements that is entering the equipment these are material that has not entered the equipment. Okay. Therefore, all of them belong to the same property that they have not entered the equipment therefore, s equal to 0 all the elements at f naught belong to s equal to 0. Because they belong to s equal to 0 it is described mathematically by a delta function at s equal to 0. The second thing we said is that we wrote the population balance and we said that this function r what is this function r? This function r refers to time rate of change of property of interest time rate of change of property of interest. That means, property of interest is s in this case time rate time. Therefore, s equal to t is the meaning that we must attach to this r. Therefore, the time rate of change is d by d t of s where s equal to t therefore, r is 1 and that is how. So, the interesting point that I would like to draw your attention is that population balance is really about understanding the physics and try and capture from your reality what is the function that we would use to describe that reality. Moment you do that this technique becomes very powerful that means, you must understand the physics of the problem. Then the, if you do not understand then you do not know what meaning to attach to this function r let us go further. Let us take one more example, uh, which is uh, it's a little bit more involved, but I think uh, we should spend some time on that. The example now I take is the example here is um, the case of external diffusion 
control uh, gas solid non catalytic reaction. Okay, this is the example I am taking. What is the example? The example is you have an equipment okay, into which in which this particular reaction is taking place, where it is external diffusion controlled. Okay, we have done this in our class. We have said that in such cases the extent of reaction of the particle is given by this. We have done this. Okay. That means, if you take a single particle and expose it to an environment of constant gas composition, it will react as per this form. We have done this in class, there is no point doing it again. Okay. All right. okay. Now, if I say now that what is d by d t of x b, what will you say? t by d t of x b is 1 upon, is it all right? 1 upon tau f. Yes or no? Yes. Is it fine with all of us? Yes. Which means that this rate function r seen in this context is with a minus sign. That's, that's no, it's not a minus, plus sign only, 1 by tau f. Okay. All right. Now, let us take this one example. Second example, let us say we look at r t d of a stirred tank okay, t bar e to the power of minus t by t bar. Now, let us say this looks like this, okay. it looks like this and say this is suppose I say this is tau f, okay. this is e function. What is this area? What is this area? We can calculate correct, area is simply you have to integrate e function between tau f to infinity. So, let me do that e, tau f to infinity e t d t. What will it be? I call this k. You can be easily shown this becomes equal to e to the power of minus of tau f by t bar. It is no point wasting time. Okay. What have we said now? If you look at the e function for a stirred tank okay, and we look at the fraction that belongs to time of residence greater than tau f. Okay, that becomes equal to e to the power of minus tau f by t bar. This comes from simple integration, this is nothing to waste time. Now, I ask you in a process which is governed by this RTD function E t, what is the fraction of material which belongs to greater than tau f? You will say it is given by e to the power of minus tau f by t bar, which means what? This material which spends time greater than t f is completely consumed, completely reacted. Yes or no? Because it is spending time greater than tau f. So, a material which is completely reacted, okay. suppose I say I call it white, it is a white particle. Why is it white? It is completely reacted. Okay. It is a white particle. Some people say it is completely reacted, it is a black particle, it does not matter what it is. It is a particle whose property is described by a delta function. We understand it is a property described by a delta function because the value is either 0 or 1, so, it is everybody having the same age, you know that kind of. Or in other words, whenever you have a chemical reaction, where the rate function is 0 order, 1 by tau f, it is 0 order. Okay. Then the problem is that in a, in a stirred tank, there is a certain fraction of material which is completely black or completely white, whichever way you want to look at it. That means, that fraction of material to describe in population balance terms, it is a delta function. Okay. Therefore, whenever you have a property whose functionality is a delta function, which is, is an unbounded function, in population balance, when it appears, you will have to appropriately deal with it, because you cannot deal with unbounded functions in a differential equation. Okay. This is the problem we want to deal with now, because this we will encounter again and again not simply in chemical engineering in many such cases unbounded functions appear and it has to be appropriately dealt with. Okay. So, what we are saying now our distribution function which is f it can have a, a discontinuous part what is meant by this 
because this fraction of material it is either completely black or completely white okay we don't know what it is and then there is a continuous function it is continuous okay we understand what i'm saying you can have situations like this you have a chemical reactor regenerator is going between these two okay where r1 is sorry r1 is minus k1 r2 is plus k2 this is the reactor this is the regenerator what is meant by minus k1 it is zero order okay what is meant by plus k2 it is again zero order so his instances where f1 and f2 it is i'll call this as s minus 1 plus g2 okay this these possibilities are distinct okay so how do you deal with situations where you have such kind of discontinuities in your distribution this is this is quite common it's very common in you know theoretical physics they they sort of handle this very well we have such a problem and we want to see how to handle these kinds of discontinuities in our problem okay so i'll do state this once again you have you have a reactor okay you have a regenerator this is this is given by r1 equal to minus k1 r2 equal to plus k2 okay all right now because of the fact that this is zero order zero order means what this material gets completely consumed and there is a fraction finite fraction which belongs to completely black when a black means it's completely consumed okay in the regenerator there is a finite fraction which is completely regenerated which is white that means it is white black means completely consumed white means completely regenerated these possibilities exist okay here is a reactor regenerated system in which you have in the reactor because of the reaction that is taking place the material gets completely deactivated okay it's fully coke coke deposition is such it's completely deactivated okay and the possibility that in the regenerator because of the uh, reaction it can be completely uh, regenerated so complete deactivation means activity is zero it belongs to delta s equal to zero it's a delta function at s equal to zero only for zero order, only for zero order. this happens only for zero order because if you look at a first order process first order process is what x equal to e to the power minus kt infinite time it takes so this only in situations where the time of complete consumption is finite which is the case with external diffusion we have done that in class all these problems of non catalytic gas solid reaction we have shown that the time required for complete consumption is finite and we know how to calculate this because we know the rate constant diffusion coefficients and so on correct so in situations where the time required for complete consumption is finite you will find that in stirred tank kind of uh, rtds there is a finite fraction which belongs to completely black or completely white and we should be able to deal with this kind of discontinuities in the population balance so this is the illustration that we are trying to do for which we said whenever we have this kind of problem we get rid of it and solve the homogeneous problem okay and to the homogeneous problem we generate the appropriate boundary conditions and solve to get all our answers okay so we'll try to do that now so i'll write let us write the uh, generation okay. okay so let me do it for a reactor first help me recognize that we will not worry about this we'll only worry about the continuous okay i will will come back to it as you go along input minus of output plus generation equal to accumulation okay so continuous one is what g2 i'll say this is one this is two this is so g2 minus of g1 minus of d by ds or da g1 r1 t1 bar equal to 0 this is for the reactor is it all right now let us write same thing for the regenerator g1 
minus of g 2 minus of d by d a of g 2 r 2 t 2 bar equal to 0. This is for regenerator. Okay. Is that clear? Now, we have done this for the case of first order process and we could integrate and solve the problem. Okay. The reason is that in the first order process, the time required for complete consumption is infinity. There were no discontinuities, no unboundedness and all that. There was no great problem in solving. Now, we know that these problems exist because our functions are zero order and therefore, these problems exist. Therefore, we should recognize that these functions have discontinuities. At wh where are the discontinuities? In the reactor, it will be at s equal to 0. In the regenerator, it will be at s equal to 1. We know that. Why? In the reactor, complete consumption can take place. Therefore, it can be completely get coked and therefore, the activity can become 0. Therefore, we know the discontinuity occurs at s equal to 0 at reactor s equal to 1 in regenerator. We know all that. So, with this knowledge, let us go through this and see how to generate the boundary condition at the appropriate location. So, so this our problem now is generating the boundary conditions. Okay. Once again, what do we do? We write input minus of output plus generation equal to accumulation. Okay. Limit as a tends to 0, d a tends to 0, this is 1. Okay. So, we write it between a minus a minus d s, so a minus d a and d a. Okay. Is it all right? So, let me write convective v naught, where are we? Multiplied by g 1 plus k naught delta of a minus of 0 okay, d a. Is it all right input? Do we agree with this? Why have I written this? Is it okay with everybody? We know this. See based on the understanding of the physics of the problem, we know that the discontinuity occurs at a equal to 0. That is why there is a continuous part, there is a discontinuous part. We have taken both into account. Is this okay with everybody? Now, input output V naught G 2 G 2 what else is there plus okay, L 1 we can write delta of S minus of 1 d a, but this problem is at 1. So, it will disappear anyway. So, now plus generation W R 1 a minus of d a G 1 a minus of d a minus w r at a g 1 at a okay, equal to 0. Is it all right? Please look at it. There is no need to rush this. Term by term, please understand. We are writing a material balance. Okay. We want to write this material balance in the reactor. That is where we are. Okay. What is happening? Input, output, generation, accumulation. So, this should be between S and A. Okay. See, we have taken an element, we have taken an element and we are writing inputs and outputs for this element, correct. So, we are writing a material balance. So, how much is the input going in, how much is the input coming out and reaction terms have to be written and whether we have written it correctly. We said there is convective flow, correct. We said convective flow and then there is uh, uh, reaction term. So, I, this is input, this is output. What shall we do? Okay. Now, let us go further now. Now, what are the terms that will disappear? What are the terms that will disappear? Huh? Now, this, this happens only at a equal to 1. Therefore, we are taking limit as a tends to 0, d a tends to 0. So, this term disappears and d a tends to 0, this is a continuous function, this term will disappear, this is a continuous function, this will disappear okay. and then there is no material that belongs to a less than 0. So, this will disappear. So, what is left? Minus v naught k naught delta of a minus 0 okay. minus w correct 
R, I put R 1, R 1 G 1 at 0 equal to 0. Is it okay? Can we simplify this please? Can we simplify this? What do we get? G 1 R 1 W equal to V naught and this d s the d s is this is, uh, this is d a I forgot that. So, this holds goes to 1 therefore, it becomes simply k 0 with a minus sign is it all right. Let us do it once again out input output generation equal to 0. Okay. Now, we knocked out this term g 1 d a because it is continuous term g 2 d a it is continuous we knocked out there is no material belonging to a less than 0 g 1 g 2 are continuous discontinuity is at a equal to 0 for which we are separately representing. See we said please recall we said the following we said function f 2 has a continuous part and a discontinuous part is that clear ok is it ok with everybody what we are saying there is a continuous part there is a discontinuous part ok. Now, we are writing the material balance input term output term and this is the generation term. And what we are saying is that g 2 d a g 2 being a continuous function g 2 d a goes to 0 because limit as d a tends to 0. So, this term disappears and this delta of a minus 1 con discontinuity occurs at a equal to 1, but we are talking about a tending to 0 therefore, this term will disappear is that clear. Therefore, the term the, the a, there is no material that belongs to a less than 0 therefore, this term r 1 a d minus g 1 will disappear. So, what is left behind is only this. Okay, and k 0 times delta a minus 0 d a is 1 by definition is it ok is it all right. So, this gives us where are we ah, here you are. So, our boundary condition says that g 1 r 1 at 0 equal to this or g 1 r 1 t 1 bar at 0 is minus k 0. Is it all right? We all agree with this. We have got one boundary condition now. Let us generate one more. Now we are going to do limit at a tends to one, d a tends to zero. Okay. Once again, input, output, generation equal to zero. Which one? We are writing for reactor. We are writing for reactor. Sorry, I should say that we are writing for reactor we will do for regenerator also, we will do for regenerator also, we will finish reactor at a equal to 0 we have done, a equal to 1 we will do, similarly we will do for regenerator. Okay. So, this is for reactor please, huh? I should have said this. Now, input is what? Input will be V naught G 2 D A plus L 1 delta of A minus 1, is it all right? Yes or no? is it fine. So, this is input output is what V naught integral G 1 d a plus k 0 delta a minus of 0 d a is the d a is here plus w r 1 f 1 we will take uh, between a and a plus d a. Okay. So, at a minus w r 1 a plus d a equal to 0. Is it okay? Please see yes or no input output generation is it okay? fine. Once again limit we have done limit a tends to 1 d a tends to 0 whenever d a tends to 0 all the continuous terms will go away. And since there is no material belonging to a, a greater than 1 this will go away. Okay. So, and then we are talking about material balance around a equal to 1 therefore, delta a this disappears okay. is it all right what we are saying. Therefore, we have v naught l 1 because and then the other term is plus w w r 1 f 1 at 1 equal to 0. Okay. So, in the limit what does it become 
w r 1 f 1 at 1 equal to minus of v 0 l 1. Therefore, uh, it becomes uh, so g uh, it's not g g I put g I'm sorry I'm sorry it's not f g I am sorry I am sorry about that this is g. Okay. So, this becomes g 1 r 1 t 1 bar at 1 equal to minus of l 1. Okay. Is that clear what we have said? So, this I will put this condition here therefore, g 1 r 1 t 1 bar at 1 is minus of l 1. Okay. We can we can actually show this we will do it when we meet next time we have run out of time today. So, this will become plus k 0 at 0 we will show this when we meet next time maybe tomorrow to plus l 1 we will show this tomorrow. Okay. What we have done what we have done is we are looking at an example of the population balance distributions having discontinuities and whenever there is a discontinuity we said that we must generate appropriate boundary conditions to take care of discontinuities else we cannot solve the population balance equations. We have generated those conditions now. Okay, basically, we have got those conditions in front of us. Therefore, we will be able to solve the differential equations and find out those distributions and how those distributions are affected by choice of the process variable which is k 1 t 1 bar k 2 t 2 bar or in our nomenclature alphas and beta. We will finish that when we meet next time. I will stop there.